that you agree with on a number of different things, there's still a little bit of a tension at times to be in alignment one with another. And I think we as followers of Jesus must move into a real serious conversation about how do we deal with people we disagree with. with God. I believe that getting along with people you don't like or have a lot in common with has to be one of the great hallmarks and evidence that we are following Jesus well. Because uh, Jesus said it himself, uh, if I tell you to love the person that you already love, then you're not really doing anything of great power in the sense of, you know, as nice as you following Jesus. It's easy to love folk you like. I love peace power. <laughs> it is not a challenge for me to eat it. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Probably some of us is we don't know our history all that well. That's why we always fall for the okey-doke all 
all over again. Amen. But see what they out today. You have folks from all over the country are just enjoying the, the legacy of freedom and democracy in their culture. But even at the same time, how many of you know some of these very same families are unable to enjoy full citizenship as it is called in this country? Because of the broken laws and policies that selectively prioritize some folk over another. Or because some folk live beyond an artificial line that has been drawn. Amen. How many know when you look at the planet from space, there is no borders nowhere? Amen. 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 Nobody care about what country you're from when you went out of space. <laughs> you'd be like, uh oh. Well, are struggling to figure out how long should we wait people, should we make people wait to become full citizens and participants in a land that their ancestors were in before all of us got here. You see,
a heavy scripture for some of us. You're like, man, the Holy Ghost tell me to talk all the time. And I'm just walking down the street talking, oh, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's been so good to me. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, bless and hide favor. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I know. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm so glad. Jesus, 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 Jesus. But could it be that sometimes the Holy Spirit is telling you to stop talking? Hmm. Paul. Learn 
but not religious. Yeah. Not Christian, post-religious, post-Christian. And they're open to a new narrative and description of what it means to be in relationship with Christ. Yeah. But you and I have to be people who are skilled in helping to connect them in ways that does not cause more harm than good. If your neighbor high five and tell them we got to learn to connect. Bridge builders. Yes, Hello, somebody. Not demolitionists. For some of us, the only tool we got is a hammer. How many know when the only tool you got is a hammer, everything seems like a nail to you? Amen. We just go, go, go. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hell, hell, hell. Sin, sin, sin. <laughs> Man, did you got a screwdriver? <laughs> God is looking for some folk who are willing to learn how to use the same message with some different tools. So I mean, it's not the message that's the problem. I wish I had a church in here today. You know
Surely we cannot 
a piece of work. Praise God. All right. So why are we so hard on the young people? They just a piece of work in their own generation. So our job is to build a bridge. What happens if we don't build a bridge? Then our young people build their lives off of half truths. Because there's no adults to give them the other half the truth. So, you know, they, they'll look at these crazy videos, be out saying all these folks, taking a bow down and all this old foolishness. The commitment of 
of Jesus to us was more powerful than the commitment of his judgment. And you gotta know Jesus was uncomfortable being in this world. Can you imagine the eternal, uncreated one having to walk around in this very limited body? Mm -hmm. Jesus used to be in everywhere all the same time, could only be one place at one time. The one that created the whole universe had to figure out how he was gonna eat enough food every day so he wouldn't be so famished and he would pass out. Mm -hmm. Jesus was uncomfortable. But his discomfort was worth it for you. Because he saw you valuable enough. And I want you and I to be a church of people, followers of Jesus, who are more comfortable being uncomfortable. More comfortable being uncomfortable. Some of you know we live in a part of the country where a lot of folks that will make us uncomfortable. Make me uncomfortable. If Jesus can handle it. And the same spirit that was in Jesus, or the same spirit of Jesus, is in me and you. Tell your neighbor, you can handle it too. Tell me, you can handle it too. In your family, you can handle it. On your job, you can handle it. At your school, you can handle it. With your friends, you can and the final thing, practice the practices. Somebody say practice, practice. the practices. Practice. Say it again, practice, practice. the practices. practices. The practices that I'm talking about are the spiritual disciplines of our faith. These practices transform us from who we are now to who God would want us to be. Theologically speaking, this process is called sanctification. That for the rest of your life, you are being sanctified, transformed. There is never a moment that the Father of Jesus is not being made more like Jesus. The only time you are really like Jesus is when you are in heaven. Everything else, you got a ways to go. So you, know, you got a ways to go. I know you look nice, you got your church clothes on, and you know, you got your makeup did real nice, you got your nice, you know, three piece suit on, you got your tapered cut, praise God. You know, but, 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 tell your neighbor, you still got a ways to go. Who are you speaking other tongues, heal the sick, raise the dead, swing from the chandeliers, preach to the pitiful law, sing to folks that levitate in the air, but tell your neighbor, you still got a ways to go. So, so the practices help us in our ways to go. We take communion. Not because it's a snack before lunch. Come on. Some things in common with. We learn how to 
not be divided by things that in the final analysis will not carry over into eternity. Jesus, I'll close with this, uh, was approached by a number of men, fair to say men in the text, who found a woman in the act of adultery. I mean, you've heard this story before. A few of you all, okay? So this is Bible Sunday, Sunday school lesson. Woman found in the act of adultery, some men bring her to Jesus, and the scripture says in one of the versions to try and tempt and trick him. I, I can't deal a lot with that, but you must be somebody hmm. trying to trick Jesus <laughs> you know, to make yourself feel good. You know, oh, Jesus got to answer this way because. You know, that's what he said. Anyway. They put the woman in front of Jesus and they got stones. And they said, according to the law, we should stone her because she's been caught in an act of adultery. And Jesus, seeing this mob in front of him with stones ready to kill the woman for being caught in the act of adultery, Scripture says he gets down on the ground and starts to do do, do something. Think he's thinking, download the wisdom of the Father? I don't know. <laughs> and he says, You that are without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> Jesus used the same law that they were trying to kill her with, he used the same law to save her. Remember what I said earlier about if all you got is a hammer, you think everything's a nail? But Jesus had a screwdriver right there. He used the same law with a different tool and rather than destroying this woman, he looks up and all of the brothers walk away, dropping their stones. And I love the lessons of this passage and the passages we read earlier because it reminds us that Jesus does not find himself ever with the mob. The mob of people who are trying to condemn and, 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 and belittle and put their foot in folk neck because they may be out of right relationship or behavior or whatever. Jesus has a personal encounter with this woman. He asked her, where are your accusers? I look around and no one's there. Jesus could have said, well, I'm still here. But what did he say? He said, I don't accuse you. Just go and sin no It is easy for us to sit in our couches, in our homes, far from the experiences of people, and condemn and join the mob of accusations. Why don't they just pull up their pants? Why don't they just do this? Why don't they just do that? Why don't they stop stealing? Why? And you ain't did not one. To help any one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's real. Could it be a child of God? Jesus calling you out of the mob? Mm -hmm. Saying, why don't you bring her and him to your house? Find out their journey. Find out what makes them click and tick. Get past the part of them that you may not agree with and show them some love. This is the kind of church that God's calling us to be. In the 21st century, a time when all these fights in the public are more political than they are about people's personal lives. Could it be that God is calling you and I to be the bridge builders? If you introduce folks to Jesus, how do you know Jesus can handle everything? Amen. Even every high tell God can handle everything. Everything. God <laughs> but God just keep me here in Berkeley having to run into these folk. I stopped going to meet them, so I wouldn't see them. I saw one of them in the store, the airport. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and I get the same ugly feeling whenever I see them. 
<laughs> you know what that shows? That shows I'm not like Jesus in that. Yeah. I gotta work on some stuff. Because Jesus don't feel that way about them. So why should I feel that way about them? What if he saw me every time Jesus saw you, he was like, oh. <laughs> figure out how to bridge those differences. I don't have a formula for you other than love. Whenever I am, whenever I feel like I'm getting ready to air, I'd rather air on the side of love. I'd rather just fall off the cliff in love. Whatever I think that's like, because love covers a multitude of sin. Now, if the church can become hospitable, I think regardless of people's race, gender, sexual orientation, regardless of their status, regardless of if they've been in jail or not, regardless of if they got education or not, we would have more space for God to get some work done in our lives. Amen. Amen, brother. It's uncomfortable. Believe me, it's uncomfortable for me. I'm not up here preaching because it's comfortable. Shoot. But I feel like the word of God is pushing us to not stay in Asia, a stone's throw from Paul's place. Not stay in, but, but, but go further and be willing to be in some spaces of difficulty. This is what I believe God is calling us to do. And I pray that we'll We'll embark on that journey together.